entrepreneur again. Um, today we have a very special session in that it's a online Tinkerpreneur mentoring session. Um, this session in this session, um, our regional mentor of change, Mr. Kiran Kumar, will walk you through the step by step process or what you can do to actually refine your product. He did a similar session last week for week two as well, and this week he'll talk to you as your mentor on how you can really ace um, refining your product. So with that, sir, welcome to today's session, and I'd like to hand it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Varia. Thank you for the uh, introduction and setting the context. Uh, good morning, everyone. Just give me a minute. I'll uh, just share my uh, uh, slide deck. Absolutely. And as sir does that, I'd just like to request all students and mentors that as you go through these sessions, if you have questions about things you've done in the past, say, how do you build a chatbot or other things, you can go through the videos that we've done before and review them again and again. I noticed in the session we had yesterday, there were a bunch of questions on, um, say, products and specific skill sets. So you can also just use um the old sessions to review that and keep working on that and with that sir i think we can i can view your screen so back to you okay fantastic okay so yeah my video started i guess okay fantastic so good morning everyone i'm happy to be back again after a week uh talking to you um um, so good morning to all the students, uh, ATL in charges, teachers, mentors who have joined this call. Um, last week, uh, most of you have spent your time in um, building your digital product. Uh, and this week, we are going to uh, go to the next step, which is basically refining your digital product. Um, uh, but I guess many of you have attended uh, Mr. Um, Banu Putta's uh, session yesterday, where he talked about refining your digital product. He gave a very good introduction um, to what it takes to refine a product, what it takes to uh, address users' needs, uh, looking at it from different perspectives. So this session will be in continuation to Mr. Banupurta's uh, session. Uh, what I will be doing is going a little more into details and giving you specific tips and suggestions on how you can use your time wisely uh, how we can refine, what exactly you can refine this uh, in your digital product. So I'm going to talk about specific things this week. Okay, so with that, let's get started. So we are in week three now. So we already spent uh, two significant weeks. First week, you all acquired digital skills. In week two, um, you spent your time uh, in uh, at least getting started with uh, your digital product. Uh, many of you have created your one pagers which gives a uh, sort of clarity to what you're trying to build. And maybe I'm hoping that many of you have uh, actually shared your one pages with your mentors and got some feedback. Um, so, and probably you have started building your product. May, it may not be complete, uh, but at least um, you, you are making progress. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, if, in case you have not started, uh, I request you to start as early as possible. Um, because you've already, uh, one week is gone in building a product and then in the subsequent week, you need to make up for it. So the focus of this week is more on refining the product that you have already built. In case you have not started, please start and then you can refine your product uh, as early as possible. Okay. And then in subsequent weeks, you will learn how to take your product to the market. So in week four, you're going to create something called as a business model. So as part of this business model, you will figure out how should I take my product to the market? Whom should I sell it to? How do I sell it? How do I uh, price it? Uh, how do I make money? So you're going to come out with a detailed plan of action. And then subsequent week, you're going to learn about marketing. Uh, you will also set up an online store. You'll learn about business finance. You will learn how to start your online business. Uh, run your own marketing campaign and pitch your product to potential customers and make a sale and earn money. All of these you're going to learn in subsequent weeks. So there's a lot of excitement still ahead. So um, keep your uh, momentum going. So don't drop out at any stage of the bootcamp. Go all the way. 
because the real value of this bootcamp comes only if you go through all the nine weeks. If you drop out anywhere in between, uh, you're not going to get um, good benefits out of it. So perseverance is key, especially when you're building a digital product. I know it's hard work. It requires a lot of thinking, problem solving uh, capabilities to come to the fore. Uh, but please do make good use of this time because you are being creators this week. Last week and this week, you're going to be creators. And this week is going to be even more special because you're going to move from a product MVP to something which is more market ready product. So that's the uh, excitement of this week. So it's going to be really fun. Okay. So let's have a bit of a recap from last week. Okay. Uh, I don't know, my camera seems to be switching off every now and then. Uh, so were you able to see my uh, camera? I mean, my video? It keeps switching off. I don't know whether people can see me or not. Uh, nevertheless, at least if you are able to see um, uh, the presentation slides, that is good. Um, so let's have a little recap. Last week, we talked about how to build a digital product, and we talked about three major criteria for um, uh, building a product. One is there should be a desirability or a need for a product. If there is no need for a product, if there is no wish, there is no desire for it, uh, I mean, whatever you build, nobody may want it. So there should be a want from people who would like to use your product. Okay, so it's, that's very important. So desirability is very important, human desirability, basically. And the second thing is it should be technologically feasible to build it. That means you should know how to build it. You should know what technologies to use, what tools to use, and how to build. So many of you I've seen in the last one week, some of you uh, are probably trying to build some product, but you may not be uh, knowing fully how to build it. Maybe you've got exposed to some digital skills, but you may not know all the things. So if you come up with a, um, a product idea in which you don't know how to build, you don't know what technologies to use or how to realize it, you will not be able to build it. So my um, uh, suggestion is use the skills that you have already acquired where you're comfortable and then build a product using those skills. Don't attempt to build something in which you may not have uh, the skills or may not have adequate skills. Then it becomes very challenging and you will get stuck with a product idea which you cannot actually bring it to a concrete shape and you may start losing your time. So the idea of this bootcamp is not to build a really uh, big product or a complex product or a uh, uh, really fancy product, but to build something very, very simple. Very simple that you can, so that you can learn the process of becoming a thinkerpreneur. What it takes to take a product, I mean, acquire some skills and convert it into a product, uh, maybe come up with a business model, market and sell it and take it to the market and uh, I mean, uh, satisfy customers' needs or user needs. That is what you need to learn. But once you learn this end-to-end -end process, then you can always learn more technologies, then you can uh, come up with a more uh, fancier product or a complex product, um, whatever you want. I mean, you may have some um, good ideas, but unless you know how to build it, uh, don't attempt it in this bootcamp because in this bootcamp the focus is on learning end-to-end -end skills not on getting stuck with any any specific product idea keep your product very simple very very simple so that you learn the end-to-end -end process okay so that's my request again and the third part is of building a product is the business viability of it so that means you should also know how to take it to market whom to sell it to, how to sell it to, how to make it affordable, how to make it accessible to people. So there are a lot of things involved in the business aspects of it. We are not going to cover that in this week. We are going to cover that in the next week. The business viability of your product will be covered as part of week four topic. Okay, so this is a little recap. And then we another recap from last week was you all were asked to create a product one pager. So what is a one pager? A one pager is basically a set of questions, basic questions about your product, which will help you gain clarity about your product. So for example, you came up with the name of your product, you gave a name to your product, you uh, identify, I mean, you came up with a one line summary of what your product is. You, are, you even identified what skills you're going to use to build your product. You even identified a need or a problem or a challenge or a want or a desire, whatever it is, Some somebody needs something, so what is that need I'm trying to address? 
and you also identified what your product is going to be used uh, and how uh, the, your product is going to work, who are its users, what are its benefits or usefulness to the end users. You came up with all of these. In case some of you have not already done this exercise, please do this before you start building because it gives you good clarity. If you uh, start building your product without having clarity, most likely you will go through, start building it, and after a while you will realize, oh, I didn't think of this, I didn't think of that, and then you'll start changing your idea and you'll start losing your time. So rather, if you can create this one pager and then get it reviewed by your mentor, then it becomes a lot more easier to uh, take your uh, product forward. Okay, so that's a little recap that I wanted to give. And last week you also, started building what we call as a minimum viable product. Okay. What is a minimum viable product? It's an early version of the product. It's little more than a prototype. All of you are used to tinkering and prototyping in your ATLs, uh, but the minimum viable product may be a little more than a prototype. It is an initial version, maybe version 1.0, which has just enough features and capabilities so that you can attract some early customers or early users to actually come and try out and see how your product works or how it how it is beneficial to them you just give it to some few real, uh, customers or users and ask them to try it okay basically the idea of building an mvp it gives you feedback because people who are going to use your product can give you feedback in your case the mentors are your primary customers or users you could even share it with your retail in charges and teachers or maybe even your parents to show you can show them and you can get some feedback that is why it's very important that you actually start sharing your creation on a daily basis with your users or your mentors and teachers and atl in charges it's very important that you take their feedback many students i see that they build everything and then go to the mentors or the teachers but it's not going to be very um, uh, good if if you if you go only at the very end because you have put in significant amount of effort and then if the mentor or teacher suggests some changes then it will become difficult for you to make changes because you have already put in so much of effort now there is a bit of resistance oh i've put in so much of effort should i really change this no i don't want to change it but that feedback is very important if your product has to go forward to be successful in the market so it's important that you take feedback on a daily basis okay and once your MVP has reached a level of maturity, then you can actually take your product to the mass market where you can sell it to many customers. That means you need to have gone through successive rounds of iteration and improvement for it to become good. So that means feedback is a very, very crucial part of this process. Okay, so unless you take feedback, it's not going to work out. So let's see where your product is. So all this was the recap, okay, all this whatever I talked about so far. But where is your product now? As of, I mean, one week since you started building your product, where is it today? Is your product complete? Is it ready for use by its users? So that's the question you need to ask yourself. So how far have I progressed? So maybe I thought I'll build a car, but to have, I mean, have I built a roller skate or have I built a bicycle or I've built a motorbike or have I built a car? Where is my product right now? What stage is it in? Okay. The thing is, when you initially build your product, it will definitely not be ready. Maybe you thought you'll build a car, but you're, I mean, there's no car yet. I'm just giving an example. So the thing is, it, the initial product lacks required features and functionality or capabilities. It may lack maturity, it may lack stability. It may not have the sufficient strength or the quality or the polish or the finish. It is probably not packaged well. You have built just about something basic. But if you just go and try to sell this product to customers, most of them may not like it. There will always be some early adopter customers who will say, okay, let me take a look and let me try it out and then they will give you feedback. But most customers will not be interested in buying a product which is at a very early stage because there'll be a lot of drawbacks. So there'll be, it will not satisfy their needs well. It will not offer them the desired benefits. So it requires more work to do. So that is where this refining the product comes to. So unless you know how to refine your product, you will not be able to take your product to the mass market and sell it to a large number of customers. 
so basically it requires refinement you need to refine your product so that it is acceptable to its end users or customers look at this example of a car that you wanted to build so maybe your initial mvp is more like a car which was in probably in use in the early uh, or late 19th century or 1800s and then uh, the car went through successive refinements and then you had a car with a cover on top uh, gave some more benefits uh, the the driver or the passenger sitting in the car it was a little comfortable and then that was the first refinement a second refinement you could have more people sitting in the car it had a complete enclosure it had doors top cover everything it was much much better and then the third refinement it became even more sleek and it could uh, it had more space uh, people could sit comfortably maybe it also had an air conditioning it could travel longer distances on the same fuel so a lot of refinements happened from the initial version of the car to the the third version of the refinement so this process of refinement never ends it keeps on going i mean you can keep on refining but at what stage do you need to uh, make it available to the customer i mean you cannot keep refining forever in your lab at some stage you need to release it to the customer just make sure that whatever stage you release it to the customer it's acceptable by the customers at least okay so that they will more and more people will start using it when more and more people will start using it you will also get more feedback from customers and then you can build your next version of your product and that is how it evolves product evolves over a period of time it over a period of months or years or decades so many big companies go through the same process of refining and evolving their product so it takes sometimes years to bring out a new model or a new version of the product um, but it is i mean it takes time okay so but you don't have to wait till you get to the final finished version okay so every i mean wherever you are at least try and start testing it in the market the most important thing is to test it in the market and to see if people are users or customers are willing to buy it the more people buy it you get better uh, um, feedback and then you improve it so as part of this boot camp we are going to look at some six areas in which you can refine your product one is you need to refine the functionality of your product itself call it as a product function the second thing is we, we call it as features and the third is called benefits features and benefits are what the customers really want or they are interested in they may uh, not necessarily understand how the product really works underneath okay underneath the package or the box that you offer them or the software or the app how internally it works customers don't care but what they care is really the features and the benefits that they're going to get out of it. but they also care about product quality how well the product functions doing something is one thing but doing it well is another thing so improving your product quality is very important and user experience that's another very important factor that you need to consider user experience talks about how the user is going to use the product i mean is it comfortable to use is it convenient to use uh, things like that there are many things mr banuputta also talked about user experience yesterday in his session and ultimately you also need to package your product well so unless you package it well it's not going to sell so when we talk about refinement we will talk about all of these so let me go a little detail in each of these and explain you and i'll also give you the steps involved i mean what you need to do this week so the primary goal of your product is to address the user's basic need if the product doesn't address the basic need then it's of no use i gave you these examples even during my last session last sunday look at all of these the uh, the um, um, item number 5 for example the chair it's very uncomfortable to sit isn't it we saw this example last week if it doesn't satisfy the user needs of sitting comfortably in a chair then it's of no use building such a product and if you have the kettle which is item number 6 it has the handle and it has the opening on the same side and it will be very inconvenient to use or item number 7 when you start drinking from it it all falls on your face or on your uh, dress so it's again very inconvenient to use or the coffee uh, cup in the, um, it's going to be very hot holding that handle because the coffee is so close or item number 8 where the tap is um, i mean the water is coming out of the tap not inside the bottle but outside the bottle or maybe if you and if you have a wash basin at home if the water falls 
on the uh, outer surface of the wash basin rather than within the um, uh, wash basin, then it's again of no use, right? So you need to build a product that addresses the user's basic needs. So make sure that you refine your product till it satisfactorily addresses the user's needs, till it satisfactorily. So it's, I stress that point, it should sat satisfy the user. If it doesn't satisfy the user, even if you build a nice looking chair or a nice looking um, a cup and saucer or a kettle, it's of no use. Okay, so if your product is not at a stage where it can satisfy the users, you need to work towards improving it, improving the function of it. Okay, to make sure that it basically it addresses the needs first. That's the most important thing. And the second thing that matters to people or the users is the features and benefits. They may not really know how your product really works, but they really worry about the features and benefits. They give importance to these two factors. What are features? Basically, let's take a little example. There are two examples on this slide. If you look at a simple umbrella, the umbrella has to have a waterproof material. If the material of the umbrella, the clothing of the umbrella is not of waterproof, what would happen? So all the water would drip inside and you will get wet. So waterproof material is what the customer really cares. And it should be unbreakable design. That's another feature that the customer would be interested in. It should not be flimsy, it should not break. Uh, maybe it should have a wooden handle or it should have a button in which you press that button and the umbrella should open. So things like this, this is what a customer really uh, expects, not how exactly, what is that material, what, um, what type of material is it, he do doesn't care. But what he cares is, is it strong enough? Does it serve my purpose? Does it uh, give me shield against um, sun and rain? So if the umbrella is too small, then again, it is of no use because all when it starts raining, all the water will still fall on you on the, from the sides. Right. Or if it is too wide, then it's also clumsy to walk in a crowded area because the umbrella is going to poke against everybody else who is walking on the street. So it becomes very clumsy. If it is too big or too small, it has to be of the right size. It should have the right material so that it protects you from uh, rain and things like that. It should offer you shade from the sun. If you, if you have a transparent umbrella, maybe it's of no use because again, all the sunlight will fall and then you will probably not get the benefit of shade. So the benefit that a customer expects is basically he wants protection from harmful sun rays or he wants to draw, uh, uh, block the raindrops that are from falling on, on, on top of him or her, right? So the benefits are basically protection. Protection from rain and sun are the benefits that the customer expects. Features are basically waterproof material, a good handle, which is sturdy enough, an unbreakable design. These are all the features. Similarly, if you take, let's say, an iPod or a mobile phone, for example, what is the feature in this? Maybe one GB of storage of storing uh, songs. That is a feature that a, um, a user or a customer would expect. But what is the benefit? The benefit is he or she can store maybe 1,000 songs in his pocket. That is what the customer really wants. Not one GB itself doesn't make any sense unless he can store more songs in it or more photos or more videos. So always when you buy a mobile phone, you look at maybe how, what is the storage, how much of memory I get and things like that, isn't it? Why do you care about memory? Why should it matter whether it is one MB or uh, one GB or 10 GB or 100 GB? Because it gives you more space to store more things, more photos, more videos, more songs, whatever it is. The more space you have, the more uh, uh, benefit offers you. So that's how we need to look at. So customers really care about features because they get more benefits. Okay, if, if they don't get benefit, they don't really care about features. And feature also enables them to perform certain jobs. If you have a touch screen on your phone, or maybe if you have a camera, then they, the, uh, the uh, customer can actually take a photo or a video with the camera. That is why the camera is an important feature in a phone. And the megapixels of the camera is also important because it tells the customer how good the uh, photo or how good the video in terms of resolution will be. If it is a low uh, pixel camera, maybe it offers low resolution of the picture or maybe vice versa. So 
So you need to really uh, look at features and benefits. So what features you should offer your customers so that they get more benefits or how they can use the features to do their job well or easily or conveniently. So you need to care about features and benefits as well. So you need to refine your product to make sure that you offer the right features and also the benefits ultimately desired from using the product. Okay, these two are very important. The third thing is about quality. Would you buy a car, let's say, which breaks down very frequently in the middle of the road? It will be so inconvenient, isn't it? Or a car that gives out a lot of smoke when you're driving. Would you buy such a car? Or would you buy a TV remote which would just break if it slips out of your hand? Would you buy such a product? No, right? Because you know that the product is of not good quality. Nobody wants a poor quality product, irrespective of the price that they pay. They expect the product to work uh, always. They expect the product to be robust. It should, it should be sturdy enough. It should do its job well. It should do its job all the time. It should, it should not so happen that it works sometimes, it doesn't work sometimes. So it's, uh, quality is always important. And what does it mean to incorporate quality? Even when nobody is asking you, no user is asking you to, uh, about quality, you should still build quality into your product. Because it's so essential to any product. A customer will not come and say, I want a product like this. I mean, it should have so much of quality. Customers will not have any idea of what really how to quantify quality, but you should think ahead and see what is the kind of quality that you need to incorporate in your product. Okay. So quality means doing it right when even no one is looking. So whether somebody expects you to um, offer quality or not, you still need to give a good quality product. If you don't get good quality product, it's not, nobody's going to buy ultimately because sooner or later they will work out that your product will not, doesn't work or it stops working. Or maybe you click on some link and the link says, um, page not found. <laughs> or you click on a screen on a button on your mobile app and then it says error. <laughs> so what would you do? Would you ever buy um, and download that app again or use that website? No, right? You would get fed up with it very easily and then you will move on to some other product which gives you better quality. So that's what happens. So quality is a pride of workmanship. You need to take pride in whatever you're creating. If you don't take pride, you will create a poor quality product and ultimately it will fail in the market. Nobody is going to use your product. So quality is so very essential to anything that you build, any creation that you do. So refine the quality of your product to meet or even exceed the expectations of your users. Okay, if customers expect certain thing, you need to build something more on top of it so that it, it works for even longer. Let's say you buy some washing machine. The, um, uh, normally the washing machines may last for five years, 10 years, but you need to build the pro, uh, your washing machine in such a way that it can last maybe 12 years or even 15 years, something like that. Okay. Otherwise, customers get fed up. I mean, washing machine at least has a long life cycle, but mobile phones may be very short uh, uh, life cycle. So you keep changing your phone every uh, other year, maybe once in two years, you keep changing your phone. Uh, for that one kind of quality is important for a uh, washing machine you need a different kind of quality so every product has a different requirement for quality because the customer's expectations are different maybe they'll throw their phone every two years and buy a new one but maybe washing machine is not something that they will keep throwing every two years okay so you buy certain things to use it for longer duration so you have to be mindful of that and another most important aspect is how your product looks, the look and feel of your product, the aesthetics, the appearance, which, and how you can use it, the user experience, all of these matters. So, so if the product doesn't look good, even though it may do a good job, if the product doesn't look good, nobody's going to buy it, or majority of the people may not buy it. Maybe still some people will buy it, even if it doesn't look good but majority will look for something which is appealing, which they like to look at every day, which they love to use every day. So you need to make the product look good as well. Not only just look good, but even in terms of usage, it should be uh, convenient. It should be comfortable to use it. And uh, maybe you build a website, it should have a well-structured uh, content so that everything is easily find, uh, 
people can locate the information very easily. So they should know what this particular menu does. If I click on this menu, what will happen? It should be very intuitive. So the flow from one screen to another screen in a mobile app should also be very clear. The flow should be in the way the customer expects the flow should go. If you put things hodgepodge and chaotic and a lot of things clutter on your website, people will get confused, right? So always build your product, whether it is a website, whether it is an ebook, whether it is a mobile app, whatever it is, build with these things in mind that customers will get confused. So you need to make it simple and uh, usable product that as soon as you um, open the product, it should be very clear what I should do as a user. Of course, when you, let's say you open an Uber app or whether you open a uh, some other, let's say Netflix app, would you have to keep searching? Where do I find this? Where do I find this? How do I search for a movie? They'll always be on top of it. There'll be a search icon. You click that search icon, you can search for a particular movie, right? Or if you look are looking for a cab, it's very easy to uh, see all the cabs that are in your neighborhood and you just, can se just select one of the um, cab options and then there'll be a book button and you click on it, it will book your cab. So it should be simple and straightforward. Even the names that you use for your buttons and the links and the menus and the headings, everything should be very, very clear. If it is not clear, people will get confused. So you need to refine your product along these lines. So it should not only look elegant and attractive, but also it should be pleasurable and convenient to use. So you need to look on all these dimensions, okay? And finally, packaging the product is also very important. How you put your product, uh, share, I mean, you give your delivery your product to the customer. Look at how mobile phones are packaged today. They have a very nice sleek box in which they put the phone and there is a um, uh, small enclosure within this, there is a, uh, the, the charging uh, cable or the charging point is uh, enclosed. There are um, earphones. So everything is made nice and neat so that the first appearance of the product should be good. If the first appearance itself is not looking good, customers will get turned away. So even the packaging is very important. Even let's say the cookies, the, uh, the box that you see in the center, that is also very important that how you package it. So people should basically fall in love with your product even before they buy it or use it. When you go to a uh, supermarket or uh, you see all the products on the shelf, so on every product, I mean, you, you may not see what's inside the box, but the packaging is what you see on most of the products, right? Everything is packaged well, and the actual product is inside that packaging or inside that box. But the packaging or the box is what is colorful and it will be attractive and that's what you look at when you pick up a product from the shelf you most of the times we go by the looks and then only later we actually when we try to use it we will know whether it is good or not but we fall for the packaging so make sure that you package it well when you uh, build the product it's not only important that it works or it has the right features and benefits it may have the quality but if your packaging doesn't look is, isn't good then again, it turns off customers. So these are some of the few things that I wanted to highlight uh, that you need to uh, care. And what you need to do is create a wow product. Let me explain a few things here. One is when a user or a customer wants your product, he has certain things, he has certain requirements or needs, we call it as explicit requirements or explicit needs. So these explicit needs are clearly spelled out. Customer can clearly say, this is exactly what I need. Most of the times, at least, if not all the times, they can clearly say, this is my need. They can say it very unambiguously. But there are also needs or expectations of customers, which are called implicit needs. These are things that the customer will never tell you when, when you take the product to them or when you're trying to offer the product to them. But they assume that these basic things will be there, like quality, or the uh, usability or the user experience or the uh, the looks, the packaging, all of them, they just expect. They expect that the product works well, it works reliably, it works all the time, it gives good performance. They expect everything, but they may not be able to articulate and tell you that this is exactly what I want. So there are some explicit things that customers can tell you, but there are certain implicit things. 
uh, that they may not tell you. So it is as a product designer, it is your job to figure out both explicit as well as implicit uh, needs and expectations of customers. And ultimately, you can create a WoW product by not only addressing the implicit expectation and explicit needs of users, but also you need to delight the customer. Delight, you need to make them happy. You need to have something extra beyond this implicit and explicit. You need to have that little bit of extra. What is that extra? That is something that you need to figure out on your own. What is that makes the, I mean, if you give satisfies explicit needs, he'll be satisfied. Maybe you satisfies implicit needs, he'll be a little more satisfied. But to create a WAP product, you need to go a little extra and give him something extra. You need to give the customer a little more extra things. Whether in terms of features or benefits, whatever it is, you need or better quality or something, you need to surprise the customer with something more. Then you create a WAP product. Then the customer says, wow, this product is amazing. I will definitely recommend this to many of my other customers. That is how the word spreads. So your product gets free advertisement from people and they spread the word and then very soon a lot of people will start uh, coming to you and say, I also want this product. So you need, your objective should be to create a wow product, not just satisfy the customers. Satisfying is one thing, yes, when you're starting off, you may not have enough skills. You start with satisfying the customers and then you start satisfying the expectations, but sooner or later you need to move towards a stage where you can actually create a wow product. That is what makes a difference because in today's world, everything is crowded. There are so many products out there. Unless you create some differentiation for your product, some wow factor in it, it's difficult for customers to take notice of your product. Okay, so it's very important. So I would say bring all your passion to build a great product because when you build a great product, you don't have to hard sell it or market it uh, with a lot of uh, advertisement or money or whatever. So when the product is right, you don't have to be a great marketer. That is uh, the words of um, Lee Yokoka. So I think he is one of the, um, um, he comes from um, one of the automotive industries, automobile industries in US. Uh, he was probably the CEO or chairman of one of the, uh, the big car companies in um, US. So that's his statement. So basically make sure that whatever you build, you, Aim for the highest standards of perfection, beauty, and excellence. That's what you need to incorporate in your product. Unless you bring all of these perfection, beauty, excellence, these are very, very important in today's world. Without these basic things, your product will not sell. And when you do it, when you do it with a lot of passion, you will surely achieve success in the market or in your life, in your career, whatever. It's not only for products. Anything that you do, you need to do it with a lot of passion. You need to I mean, whatever you do, it should radiate beauty in it. It should radiate excellence in it. If you, if, if you don't do it with this, if you do it with a half-hearted attempt, I mean, uh, half-hearted uh, attempt you make, it will not succeed. So you have to put your heart and soul into building your product. Then you will surely succeed. Okay, so that's what I want to tell you. And what if you don't refine your product? What happens if you don't refine your product? It's very simple. Your product will remain an MVP. It will not go further. You may not find many customers. There may be a few customers willing to buy your product, but very limited customers. You will not be able to tap the full potential of your product either. Your product may have a lot of potential in the market. It may be very innovative, but if you don't work, if you don't refine, you don't do anything, you don't put any effort, it will not go anywhere. And you will not be able to earn significant income also on your creation. So okay, ultimately, that choice is yours, whether to refine your product, take it to the next level or just leave it there and say, no, no, this is enough, good enough. Okay, I've learned something. I don't want to do anything. That's your choice. But it's very important that you, um, uh, if, if you want success for yourself, if you want to realize the potential of your creation, uh, you want to make money out of your creation, you need to refine your product. Okay, there's no doubt about it. Okay, so there are few things like quality, um, uh, the look and feel, uh, the packaging, the functionality, um, uh, whatever, all of these are very important. The features and benefits, you need to look at all these dimensions. Now what I'll do is I'll tell you what exactly needs to be done for this week. So maybe you can even take a screenshot uh, and save it for later uh, so that you are very clear in the next few slides. 
uh, what exactly is to be done. So four steps to accomplish the assignment for this week. Step one, enhance your product. I'll explain what these steps are. Step two, polish your product, make it look good and better. In enhancing your product, you're going to enhance the features and functionality of your product. In step two, you're going to polish your product. In step three, you will ultimately enhance the quality of your product. If there are errors and bugs and things like that, something doesn't work, you need to make it work. Finally, you package it well, and finally, you can submit the refined product by end of this week. Okay, this is the four step process that you need to follow this week. And optionally, if you can think of some wow factor that you can add it to your product, uh, you're most welcome to do it. So you need to add some wow factor if you want to stand out from the crowd. But for now, step one, two, three, four are good enough if you want to um, just refine the product and get it to a better shape. That is all we are expecting you to do. Step five is always optional. Okay. Now tell, uh, let me explain what exactly you need to do when you enhance the features or the functionality of your product. Now, many of you have acquired many digital skills in the first one week or maybe even in the second week. And maybe you have built the product with one skill or maybe two skills. Now, look at if you can also bring a few additional skills or technologies uh, that you have acquired. You have learned some new technologies. See if you can add, some, maybe you have created a website. Many of you have seen that you're creating websites. Now look at the user needs and expectations and see if you can add a chat bot which will help the user even better. Maybe it will enhance the features or make life more easier if you add a chat bot so that the chat bot can answer some of the questions that the user might ask. So maybe if it makes sense, then you add a chat bot. I'm not saying that you just add a chat bot just for the sake of enhancing your product, but uh, add a chat bot if it makes sense. Maybe. You can also add a QR code or a zap code to enhance the uh, um, experience of your product. So maybe it, it gives more convenience for the user to use your product. They just have to, instead of typing the URL, they can just scan the zap code or the QR code and boom, it opens your website. Maybe it's a lot more convenient. Or even within the website, you might have want to have a quiz or something like that to test the, uh, let's say if it is a learning website, maybe at the end of the learning, Students may want to take some quiz. So you can bring quiz or the Google form based quiz into your website. So likewise, see how you can enhance the value and appeal of the product so that it is it gives the not only satisfies the basic expectations or needs or requirements of the user, but also bring something more to the customer. So basically you can enhance the features and functionality. And some of the tools also have additional capabilities. For example, if you look at the ebook creator, the Canva tool that some of you have been using to create your ebook, you, you can create very interesting things. You can not only type text into that ebook, but you can also add videos, you can add photos, you can even add background music to that ebook. So you can enhance your product in so many ways if you exploit all the capabilities of the tool. Maybe you have exploited only or explored only a few capabilities of those tools, but if you actually look around and see the tools have many other capabilities some of you have composed your own music using the song maker tool did you know that the song maker tool allows you to download the music that you have created and once you download that music maybe you can go and add it to your ebook or to your uh, video story so there are different ways in which you can combine uh, your skills to enhance the features and functionality of your product make it look better maybe it will bring more value to the customer Again, you need to keep in mind what the customer needs, and maybe these are some ways in which you can delight the customer or create a wow factor by um, combining a few things in, in a nice way. But again, don't do a mishmash of just putting a lot of things just under the garb of enhancing the quality or enhancing the product features and functionality. Do it with purpose. Do it with, um, make sure that it makes sense to the user. It really enhances and it doesn't add more clutter and um, nuisance value to the customer. Okay, it should be done in a thinking. You need to think through and then do it properly. So step number one, okay, take a screenshot of this if you want to, before I go to step two. Okay. Step two is basically you need to polish the product's looks and make it more easier to use. It's very important that the product looks nice and neat. Uh, so overall, 
look and feel of your product should it should be good it should be appealing to the customer make sure that you use great looking themes layouts attractive colors use the right kind of font text images maybe the scenes in your games whatever music you can use i mean make use of all of these but again don't overdo anything i see some of them actually putting a lot of colors it looks very colorful but it's very hard to make out what is inside those colors so don't overdo anything just keep it uh, nice and clean and neat but use the right colors in the right ways so it's important that you you polish the product but um, do it with i mean do it to a level where it makes sense don't overdo it anything okay and again organize and structure and organize the content on your websites or your mobile app whatever your ebook whatever so that things are spread out don't don't clutter everything in one page of your website or one uh, screen of your mobile phone, mobile app for example spread them into multiple screens so that it becomes easy always look from the user's perspective how will the user use it put the most important things on your home page or the introductory information on your home page but have separate web pages on your website for the user to click and go to specific things or in a mobile app look at how the user would actually use it so have the screens in the right order so that the flow is clear and smooth and intuitive and the, what the customer expects so you need to refine your product along these lines and polish it so that it comes in a beautiful way that the customer would really like and appreciate to use it and be consistent in whatever colors or font or text everything that you use be consistent across your complete website or app or your ebook or whatever your quiz whatever you create be consistent use the same set of colors same templates okay if you use different colors different templates and different pages different screens it will be so confusing right so make sure that you refine your product to bring some consistency and ensure smooth flow from first step to the last step everything should be smooth flow at any point in time customer should or user should not get stuck thinking what should i do next if i get to the first screen of the mobile app and i don't know what to do next then it becomes very difficult and then people will give up using your product so make sure that the flow is very smooth and clear overall make it attractive to the eyes and convenient to use okay so keep this in mind how you do it is i mean for your specific product so i will not be able to give specific examples for everything but i am giving you a broad um, picture of what you need to look for and what you can improve okay these are not the only things there are more things that you can look at but these are some tips and suggestions for you to improve your product or refine your product and quality what do i mean by quality for example make sure that if your website it loads quickly it should not take a long time to load if it starts saying loading 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 and then maybe five minutes it keeps waiting or your mobile app also you click a button and it doesn't open the next page it takes a lot of time to open people will get frustrated so make sure that the performance of your product is good it loads fast and it does the things fast speed is very essential today nobody has patience to keep uh, keep waiting or maybe you click a i mean open your website or you you give a, your customer a qr code or a zap code or a link to open and they scan it and it says oops website is down or the mobile app is not downloading if, if it gives errors like these nobody is going to buy your product anymore right so make sure that it is always up and running and it is error free so it should not say page not found a screen not found or maybe something else it should not give errors and make sure that it's safe and secure for people to use it as well and it works reliably it should it should not so happen that it works sometimes it doesn't work sometimes this can happen with artificial intelligence machine learning kind of applications where uh, things may not be as reliable as some of the other products so make sure that you train the artificial intelligence model or the machine learning model well so that the it's uh, not only its accuracy improves but also its prediction rate improves and everything improves and it gives consistent results uh, time after time otherwise you show an arduino in front of this artificial intelligence model one time it says arduino another says it says fire sensor or sometimes it may say it's a mobile phone that should not happen it should work consistently every time so make sure that uh, you put some effort to improve the quality of your product 
okay so these are some of the things that you need to keep in mind when you improve the quality so you try and do as much as you can in this one week so at least dedicate one day for each of these uh, activities okay step four ultimately you need to package your product well so many of you have been asking uh, why should i package my product in a website and things like that so i'll answer that question as well first and foremost if you have created whatever product you have created put a name of your product on top of it let it be prominently be visible so as part of packaging name is also important uh, whether it is a physical packaging or whether it is a, a your mobile app or a website or a quiz you need to give it a name it should not be some un, untitled page it should not be like that it should have a good name a catchy name which uh, your customers can recollect and recall and they can say this is the product i want okay so you need to give a name and then embed your product preferably in a website why we are saying this is because if you just have some google form yes that also gives you a link but it is just standing alone there or maybe you have some mobile app an apk file that you've created but it's just an apk where are you going to put this apk when when you are start actually selling it you need to have it somewhere right online when the customer wants to buy it they should be able to download it after making the payment they should be able to download the uh, app or maybe they should be able to view your quiz or an ebook that they can download so unless you provide a mechanism for them to download some source from which to download from where are they going to download from we just keep the apk with yourself on your computer how is the customer going to access it when they when they buy it the customer buys it they should also be able to download your product so put it on a website so that it becomes easy to access at the same time putting on a website also ensures that you can give access to only paying customers don't give access to everybody if you make it public you have, if your website is public then everybody can go and download your product without paying money right now your websites may be public keep it that way for now but later on in week six and seven or maybe by the end of the boot camp when you actually start selling your product in uh, when you really start selling your product i would say then you should lock your website under password username and password and only your online store will be visible to the public and customers pay and then you give access to only those customers to access your website so that they can go to your website and download or use your product so that becomes much more convenient if you have something like because these are all digital products you need to have it somewhere so that it becomes easy for convenient for people to use or download your product and when you package your product just don't put the product within that website just give some introduction because some customer or some user who comes to the website should know what is this product about it should give a short introduction otherwise nobody can understand what you have what you have in that website maybe there is some quiz or something and some ebook but what should i do with it you need to give some good introduction you should also create some user guide especially if your product requires some few series of steps to use it if customers don't know how to use it you need to give them step by step instructions especially with artificial intelligence um, or machine learning kind of products you need to tell them do this first and switch on your camera then hold that physical object in front of the camera and then do this and then do this so unless you give those steps customers or users will not know how to use your product they'll get confused and they will never come back to your product okay so create some small user guide when i say user guide it could be a series of written instructions saying that do this do this do this for example in digital skills page you had the slide decks right all of you were easily able to acquire skills in various digital tools and technologies because the step by step instructions were given you can create something like that or you can just write it down in a series of sentences or you can put some pictures or some slides or screenshots whatever you want to create or a video it's up to you how you want to create it and finally maybe you can also have a data input form like a google form wherein you can even gather users feedback and inputs because once people you start using your product they may have some suggestions or feedback if you have a google form it makes it easy for them to give you feedback from using the product so that way you can collect more feedback to improve or refine your product even further so when you package your product think of all of all of these okay so packaging is not just putting a box around it but you can also think uh, around all of these do as much as possible i'm not saying that everything uh, should be done in the next one week but try to refine and keep doing it this is a process it never ends 
and ultimately i'll also give you one more uh, in, insight this is little ahead of time but many uh, students i see are trying to create their own online stores within their digital product but that is not be necessary because you're going to create an online store in week six what you need to do right now is just create your core product which addresses say users needs that could be in the form of a website or an ebook or a mobile app or some uh, augmented reality experience whatever it is you just had to create that and just put it in a website uh, so that it can be uh, made available to the user or customer at a later point in time okay now how will the actual customer buy the product from you so you will have to create an online store don't create the online store now we'll tell you how to create it some students are already jumping ahead and trying to create an online store but we'll tell you how to do it in a proper way and how to integrate it with your website product website as well so you have customers on the right side and thinkpreneur you are the thinkpreneur and you have your online store and you have your product website here now what the customer first thing you need to do is you need to put some product information and the price of the product on your online store this you will do it in week 6 not now okay i'm not asking you to do this now and then customers can place an order once you have made the information available on your online store customers will be able to place the order and once they place the order you can give access to your website to that customer who has made the payment to your website they will get access what the customer will do they will also get once you give access they will also get the link to your product website and they will go to your product website and they will download your product or they will use it whether it is a mobile app whether it is an ebook whatever they will be able to download and use the product this is how it will work but right now your job is only to create this product uh, and put it in a website all the rest we are going to do it in a later stages of this boot camp okay now let's let me give you two examples of how a refined product may look like let's take a simple quiz as an example let's say you created a quiz maybe you had a series of questions and multiple choice answers maybe this is your product mvp but maybe once it is refined you might have some pictures like these for every question because it becomes uh, more convenient for uh, uh, people to answer your questions you might have a video or you could even have a qr code or a zap code which will trigger um, another experience in which uh, the user can actually go and take a look before answering the questions in your quiz so this is one example of a refined product what we have refined is basically we have added photos videos zap code or qr code we made the look and feel slightly better we also rewarded some of the questions and answers for better clarity because maybe in the earlier one some of the questions were not so clear it was maybe a little confusing so you made it more clear so you improved the clarity i mean you improved the quality of the product you probably there were some errors in the answers also maybe you corrected those things so you improved the quality as well and finally you packaged all the entire quiz inside a website so that it becomes easier to use it so this is one example this is an mvp and what you see on the right side is there could be a refined product so i'm just giving a simple example but it depends on what product you build. Similarly, if you have an ebook, ebook could be initially when you build the uh, ebook in uh, last week, it could have just some text. But now, when you refine the MVP, you might also add some pictures, you might also add some video, or you could even have some QR code or zap code or whatever. It's up to you. Maybe some hyperlinks for additional reference, or you might maybe when you scan this, it opens a quiz where uh, at the end of every chapter of this ebook, uh, students can actually take a test or uh, undergo a quiz so they can demonstrate their knowledge or they can satisfy that I have understood the subject. So there are many things that you can do. So you, have, you can improve the features in terms of video, zap code, you can make it better look and feel, you can fix any grammatical errors, uh, You instead of writing long paragraphs, you can split them into smaller paragraphs so it becomes easier to read and you can package it within a website as well okay and finally i mean we're just concluding today's talk uh, it's almost an hour i think we started around 11 5. so this is a uh, tentative schedule i would say uh, for due dates intermediate due dates so today's session we are doing it on 13th uh, if you have any pending tasks in your mvp you can finish it by 15th but again work with your mentors on these dates i'm just giving a 
uh, generalized dates, but work with your mentors. If you have mentors, please work with them. Your mentors may give you uh, specific tasks to do and specific, they, they may specify their own dates. So stick to the dates that your mentors give, but this is general an outline, like how you could spend the next one week. Every day you have something to do, okay? So today we are going through a live session, and then between today and 15th, you can complete whatever is pending in your MVP. Then you can start thinking of enhancing some product features on by 16, polishing the appearance of your product by 17, improving the quality by 18, packaging your product by 19, and finally by 20th, you could even submit your product. Okay. So if you keep one day at least for each of them, again, it's it's up to you how you want to spend your time, what you want to spend more time on, whether if your product already has good looks and finish, maybe it has some errors or grammatical errors, whatever you may spend more time on improving the quality of your product. Or if you think that you need to enhance it with more features and more capabilities by exploiting some of the tools, you can spend more time on that as well. So it's up to you how you want to spend this time, but use it wisely because this week will help you take your MVP or an initial version of the product all the way to a stage where it is ready for the market. Okay. I'm not saying that in one week you will get your product to perfect shape, but at least it'll it'll help you refine one stage, one level you will refine it. And even in subsequent weeks, you can keep on refining your product. Don't stop refining your products, keep refining it, keep improving it on all these areas. So by the end of the bootcamp, you will have it in a much better shape. Okay, and in week four, that is after one week from now, we are going to create a business model to take your product to the market. Okay, that's what we are going to do. But before that, you need to have your product in a, uh, a good shape because if you don't even have any product, then what business model are you going to create? So make sure that you use this time wisely, uh, productively, so that next week you will you can create a business model. You can start thinking of how do I take this product to the market? And how do I sell it? Whom do I sell it? How do I make money? How much should I charge them? Um, how, where, how do I earn the income? What are my expenses? So you're going to answer some more questions and create a uh, uh, business model. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. And I hope I've covered and uh, given good clarity on the next steps. So if you have any questions, I can take it now. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. So I just quickly check about the questions if there are any, if there are none, um, then uh, we can continue today's session. Sure. sure. Mm. So I don't see any questions that are there. Uh, I think you've covered everything pretty well. So yes, so I think we're done for today's session. Thank you so much for your time and for giving all the students and mentors the overview. I think the details and timelines you've shared would be a great reference for them to also um, use. And if they want to change, they can, they're obviously free to do that. So thank you so much. And I'll see all of you tomorrow for our next session. Yeah, thank you, Aria, and thank you all the participants who joined uh, today's session. Uh, I hope it was uh, useful. Uh, please come back, uh, go back to your mentors if you have any questions. Uh, they will surely be able to assist you. Just make sure that you work with your mentors all through the week. Okay, don't go to them at the last step or the last day. Work with them every single day. That will make life easier for everyone. So good luck and all the best. Thank you. Thank you.